Hello everyone. Um, a number of my uh, viewers have been asking me uh, what kind of software I use to paint with, what kind of hardware, do I use a tablet, um, you know, how do I record these demos. So anyway, that's what this episode's all about. So the program, uh, to answer the first question, uh, the program that I'm using is uh, called TV Paint Animation. Uh, it's TV Paint Animation 9. And let's see, it's a, it's a basically, a, it's, a, it's a bitmap based animation program. Um, and by that, you know, it's like unlike animation programs like say Flash or Toon Boom, um, this one is bitmap based as opposed to vector based. So most of the time you see me working, I'm only using one frame, but I can easily add, you know, additional frames. Uh, hang on, let me, let me try something. Okay, so let me lock that open. I can easily use it for animation. Let me turn my uh, uh, roll return. Oh, okay, good, the roll returns on. So. Maybe I can just cut away those frames. There we are, and then I can uh, insert another frame. There you are. So yeah, it can be used for it can be used for bitmap based animation, uh, unlike vector based stuff, which always looks like a bunch of you know um, vector like you know Illustrator, Illustrator, uh, Corel Draw. Um, you know what vector-based stuff, flash stuff, uh, that, that's what it all looks like. But anyway, this one uh, gives me, you know, things like paper textures and, you know, that's what the bitmap, what the bitmap-based stuff is, you know, you can you can get some really nice color blending and you can get, you know, smearing effects and whatnot. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with the bitmap stuff that you can't do with the vector-based stuff. The vector-based stuff is nice because you can scale it up infinitely. But uh, anyway, uh, that's you know that's pretty much the program. I use this program because it's stable. It's really fast. Most of the time you see me working, I'm only working with one frame. You know, so you, you rarely ever get to see the the animation side of this thing. Um, you know, I like it because I can modify it. You know, I, I can make my own color palettes. Like this is my own custom color palette. I go about. See, programming Mark Chong. That's me. Um, yeah, I, I can program my own color palette. I uh, program my own plugins and whatnot. Um, I, I program them in C++. I use uh, Microsoft Visual C++ um, Express Edition. You can get you can download for free off of Microsoft's website. Um, I'm using uh, for the tablet that I use. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. Whoops, hang on. Let me turn on the external camera. Hopefully that. Oh, wicked the connectors. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, this is this is a Wacom Cintiq 12WX. It's a 12-inch um, you know uh, tablet display, and that means that whenever you um, Whatever you draw on, you know you can you draw directly on the screen. You know it's not it, it's not quite like a like a conventional tablet. It's it's a tablet and it's a display at the same time. It's it's, it's an LCD monitor basically with a, a tablet that's that's built into it. So I can paint directly on it. I have two different styluses that I that I use. Uh, one of them is a this is a 6D stylus and this is the uh, standard stylus. Um, you know when I'm just drawing and painting, I'll use the standard stylus, and when I want to do any kind of charcoal work, then I'll use the 60. Um, I've hacked the the driver for this Wacom um, this this Wacom tablet. Let me uh, unclip the uh, camera. Okay. Now uh, I don't know if you can quite see this. Maybe if I switch the thing into um, macro mode. Oh, it's good. It's got macro. Okay, macro focus. So macro focus. You can see on the on the 60, right? It's got this this kind of a chisel tip. So with the chisel tip, if I want, if you look at the um, look at the the brush shape there, as I turn it, see how that that is, you know how the if I turn this, the brush shape is changing. Like if I go to a uh, go to the tip, it turns into a little point. Whereas if I use the flat side of things, you know it it, it widens. So you know that's that's one of the the things I can do with the stylus is with the hacked. I since I hacked the driver, you know I, I made it so I can you know treat this thing. I can use, you know, I can use the, the tip of this thing. See, the tip makes very, very fine markings, and you know, the uh, the wider area, the wider part of it, lets me, you know, do these these wide wide marks, and you know, just rotating it, you know, it it approximates the um, the width of this marker. So that's that's one of the things I've done. Um, the other thing I've I've hacked on this thing is um, if I right click that and I say brush size lock. Okay, I've, I've I've hacked a brush size lock. Now the thing is, is that this tip has this this tablet tip. It's got a real size. It's got a real world width to it. You know, there's there's only so wide that it is in real life. Um, and right now I've got the brush approximating the width of 
my marker. But then what happens when you zoom in? Well, the, pro the problem when you, when you zoom in is that you're going to get a brush that's twice as big. So you see that? The brush is way too big for my, my marker. So if I, with the brush size lock, um, by I make it so that it automatically detects changes in, in uh, width. I think, that, did I activate the brush size lock? Hang on, let me check. Yeah, it's on. Oh, right, I got to hit the, uh, okay, there we are. Yeah, with the brush size lock, now it, even though I'm zoomed in to 200%, it auto resizes the brush. And if I zoom in, oh, let's say if I zoom out, okay, if I zoom out to this amount, then without having to hit any buttons, it automatically changes the size of the brush to match whatever zoom level I'm at. So there it is. You know, now I have a brush that automatically resizes according to my zoom level. So zooming in and out, um, I'll always know exactly how wide my brush is, you know, just based on the real width, the real world size of this um, this marker. So anyway, that's that's enough of that. Oh, right. Um, decide later. Okay, hang on. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you one other thing. Uh, with the hack driver, you see down here, I've got two ta I've got two um, foot pedals. Uh, one of the foot pedals here, you know, this is an analog foot pedal. It, it, well, not really analog. It's a MIDI foot pedal, so it has 127 levels of, uh, of of pressure to it, and it's not sprung, meaning that if I push it part way, it'll stay that way, and if I push it all the way in, then it will, you know, it'll it, it'll stay that way. So this is one adjustable pedal. The other one here on the other side, on, on the left, this is a foot switch. And the foot switch, it's sprung. So it's it's on or off, and whenever I release the the foot pedal, it it basically um, you know it springs back into its original position. It's on or off. So hang on, let me switch back to the regular display here. Okay. So in the regular display, what those foot pedals do is well, first of all, um, this 6D stylus doesn't have any any side buttons on it, so I can't right click with it. So with this foot pedal with the with the foot switch the the on off switch I can hold that down and I can use that to erase so there's my right click I can hold it down and I can click on any of these buttons and it will act as a right click so that's what that that button that's what the the left one's for the other one the uh, right foot switch what that does is um well you see that this 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 contr it controls the softness of the digi of the uh, the charcoal so that if I half press it it makes the it makes the the charcoal harder and if i push it even further it becomes you know even harder so this way i can control you know the hardness of the charcoal just by squishing the pedal in you know a certain amount and it will stay like that and also when i start erasing it allows me to erase to erase at smaller increments rather than you know if i if i erase like that it just blows it away um, the right click also does one more thing and that is um, Right now, I'm using a paper texture in uh, in TV Paint, and you know you can choose any of these paper textures to uh, you know to paint with, you know. Um, but the problem is that whenever you erase, uh, then let me hang on. Yeah, if I, if I erase without inverting the uh, paper texture, I wonder if I can. There. Yeah, if you erase without it, it just kind of it just kind of blows it away. Um, whoops. Let me uh, get me. Let me get. Let's get back to the uh, cement. Okay. Yeah, when I erase, it just kind of clears it up. It just deletes the um, the paper texture. Now, every time I step on the pedal, this invert, see that? The invert turns on and off automatically. What that does is that makes it so that when I erase, you'll notice that there are little pits in the paper. See that? Little pits that, that are a little harder to erase. Because without that, Without the uh, the automatic inversion of the uh, paper texture, it, it looks very fake. It, it it just seems kind of digital. It just it blows it away, but it doesn't have those little pits that are you know how paper is, right? Paper's got a texture in it. It absorbs graphite into the little pits. But when you erase it, um, those pits tend to remain. Those those pits you got to push extra hard to get rid of them. So it's a nice sort of um, way of, of approximating you know this this uh, digital charcoal medium. Um, things, other things I use, uh, you know, to, to uh, capture stuff. Uh, hang on. Yeah, to, to capture uh, video. Um, hang on, let me get to the external camera again. Uh, what I have is I've got a... I'm using 
a bunch of things. First of all, I'm not using any programs to really capture the, the video. Like, I'm not using something like, say, Camtasia to uh, capture my video. I'm using uh, this ADVC100, uh, this little capture box down here. This is a little hardware box made by Canopus, C-A-N-O-P-U-S. This is a capture box that I use to... Um, it, what it does is it takes in um, an, SV, an S video signal, an analog S video signal, and um, it turns that into a firewire capture. So it's it's seen basically just as a DV, you know, firewire camcorder. And this little box here, the one held together with the elastic bands, well, the elastic bands are just used to keep the uh, the plugs in because the the thing's not very good; they keep slipping out. But um, this thing, what this is, this is a video switch box. This is what lets me, you know, swap between the various inputs from, you know, if I if I hit this, I can. I can, uh, there. See, now I can go to an external, I, I, well, I can go to the, the regular, you know, screen capture. This, this, what this is doing is this is pulling, um, the video signal off of my, um, the, you know, video cards. Video cards have an S, uh, have an S video output on them. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the S video output from my video ca uh, card to, um, to do my work. Um, and then this one here, uh, let me get back to the external camera. Um, this is the external camera button, and then this one here, this puts me on the uh, the ugly face camera, the, the the one where you get to see my ugly face. Um, and finally, uh, let's get back to the external camera. Uh, zooming out, um, everything is well. There's a there's basically a digital camcorder that's hidden behind um, this mirror. This is a teleprompter that you're looking at. This is basically what I'm using to. Um, I don't know quite how to explain it. It's just that I want to see. Sometimes if, uh, if I want to put up my lines, I want to put up my, my own, um, I want to see what I, what I have to talk about. See that? There, I can, if I put that up there, now I've got a teleprompter display. It has all the lines, all the things that I want to talk about. Um, you know, I've got uh, a Wiimote. You know, I've got this Wiimote control that I use to adjust the scrolling speed. So I can, you know, hit this button and I can, you know, pull, uh, pull it up and down. Um, and then I've got you know trigger buttons to allow me to flip between you know seeing a mirror a mirror image and you know uh, what what's on the screen. That's that's what this this thing is doing. So yeah, I got a Wiimote basically to to tell this thing to uh, record and, and do its thing. And then also I have um, there's this volume level thing so that whenever I um, this just shows sort of the the volume gauge from my uh, my headset. So if I go ah uh, ah. Uh, so there, so it basically just shows me, you know, the the volume levels, you know, whether or not I'm clipping. Um, I got little plus and minus buttons just to to give myself more time to talk, because now with the um, the YouTube partner account, I can record videos that are longer than ten minutes, which are kind of nice. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, my setup. I've got all kinds of stuff that's held together, um, you know, with uh, I've I've got you know MIDI fader boards. I've got whoops, let me. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. You know, that's a. Uh, this is a MIDI fader board here. This is what I use. Um, uh, I, I've got sort of. Um, I don't know how to explain it. The foot pedals are basically plugged into this thing, and this thing is plugged into the USB interface, the USB MIDI interface. So this is kind of just a go between my pedals and my computer. And I just need these two boxes so that the pedals can talk to the computer. And I've got a whole bunch of programs running. I've got Auto Hotkey running. I've got uh, Carl Kenner's GloVe running. I've got my own little hacked uh, Wacom tablet DLL running, um, all kinds of shit that's that's going on. So <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's pretty crazy. Um, it's 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 you know I, I you know I, I program a lot of my own stuff. Uh, you know I, hey I mean you want things to work the way you want it to. You gotta you gotta hack things. You gotta learn how to program. Um, you know there's some DLLs that are written in C++. Uh, Auto Hotkey and GloVe are, are scripting languages um, yeah and and the uh, the capture program I'm using to capture video that's uh, that's 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 virtual dub uh, VIRT way uh, VIRT OAL or virtual a uh, dub DUB virtual dub so virtual dubs basically capturing the uh, the, the camcorder signal the, the DV signal that comes off of my um, off of my capture box down there and yeah it's uh, it's it's Quite an involved operation, uh, you know. I've got I've got all sorts of uh, stuff that I wound up having to hook up. Um, for instance, uh, whoops, uh, hang on, let me give myself a bit more time. Okay, um, for instance, there's uh, this thing here. This thing, this is a, a you know, it's it's just an adjustable mount. 
this adjustable mount is what I use to, this is what I, I you know, pop the camera on. It's just a quick release so I can quickly, you know, pop the, the, the external camera off. Um, what you're looking at here, you know, this is the teleprompter. A teleprompter has got a, it's, it's sitting on top of a Manfrotto tripod with a handle grip. Um, it's got a, there's a handle grip inside there. Uh, that that handle grip thingy right there, so that lets me readjust the uh, tripod. Um, this is a Manfrotto variable friction uh, arm, so this thing, uh, if I turn this knob, this will loosen the thing. So the the, the variable friction arm is used to um, it's used to to hold this. Um, this is a picture frame. This is a San this is a digital picture frame from Samsung. And it's it's basically uh, hooked into USB onto the computer. So this is treating the computer treats this as, a, as an extra display. The um, this hang on, let's see what's this here. This mirror. This is a, a piece of one-way glass mirror. So behind that is the camcorder. So that way I, I I don't get camera shy because you know I don't see the camcorder. It's just like talking to a like like talking to a mirror, right? So. I don't have to worry about you know being camera shy, seeing the the, the REC light and all that. Um, and then down here, this is a this is a Sony PS2 DualShock controller. So it's got the two you know thumbsticks. It's got you know this kind of stuff. It's uh, it's, it's got two trigger buttons on top, and um, it's also held in place by another Manfrotto volume, um, variable friction arm. And it's got you know a couple of these uh, super clamps, these adjustable super clamps to uh, you know make it. Those those hold onto the table and hold everything together. And uh, what else do I have? Um, yeah, it's every everything is just super clamps and Manfrotto variable friction arms. Um, so it's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. You know, it, it's nice that I can have everything held in an ergonomic position. And the cool thing is, is that whenever I want to, um, if I want to play, say, any you know first person shooters, what I do is I've got this um, this Manfrotto very the the um, I've got the DualShock controller, and this this analog stick. What this does is this controls my you know running forward, running back, and strafing. So that's this is like basically what you hook up the WSAD keys to. And then um, you know I've got my talk key for my my headset mic. You know because I, I play a lot of uh, online you know like co-op games, Left 4 Dead, whatnot. Um, I got another button. You know this other button here. Uh, this is sort of a combo switch. I got up, down, left, right. These are used for chat commands, you know, telling people, you know, hurry up, run, move. Um, start button lets me, you know, that's a tab. That basically sends a tab key so I can see my scores. Select key for uh, switching between you know, manual and fully automatic fire. Um, this is a, um, this is a, what do you call it? It's a, it's made by Razer. It's a death adder. This is a Razer death adder um, optical mouse. Uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, it's got, you know, thumb buttons and whatnot. So, yeah, usually my right hand will be on this mouse, my left hand will be on this, this game controller. And, yeah, the keyboard is basically nowhere in sight. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just using voice communications. All I need is, you know, running around. Um, weapon switching is done on the foot pedals. You know, I've got, I've got you know, uh, for Left 4 Dead, I only have to switch between my primary and my secondary fire. Um, you know, for grenades and whatnot, those are on the mouse buttons. You know, melee is on these mouse buttons. And uh, you know, strafing's on that thing. Uh, so yeah, it's it's you know, crouching is crouching is on the the, the uh, analog, the other foot pedal, the um the the EV5, the Roland EV5. Um, hang on, let me turn on the flashlight again. Yeah, this this thing. Yeah, so this is for crouching, and this one here, that's for you know switching weapons. If I stamp that pedal down, then I pull up my my handguns. If I release the pedal, then you know it puts the handguns away and pulls up my primary fire. So yeah, it's a, it's it's quite uh, it's you know even this this setup here it all it works great for games it works great for for you know any kind of uh, drawing programs that I need to use I just rescript everything the way I want it to so yeah that's pretty much it.